Good morning, sir. I am making this voice recording to the Commissioner of Police, Anambra State. My name is Nelson, and this voice recording is extremely confidential and for Kampol alone. Sir, it's with regards to the, the suspect, Ekwueme Martins, GBK, the guy that was supposed to get a rocket launcher for the prescribed ESN and IPOP terror group. I was still on holidays when CSP Patrick was briefed me on the matter and copied me the intercept on which I swung into action immediately. I put my analysis together, did my findings, did my homework, and we went into the field. I went with men on the first day and surveyed the whole area. We had a workable plan. It was on a Monday. Went there, took photographs, had a workable plan. Subsequently, so I and Sister Patrick Abazo went to 302 at Artillery, where we planned the operation with the military and we scheduled to leave the next day by 7 a.m. Fast forward to that day, I was in the office as early as I could. We pulled out to Mbosi. I, I moved out with the advance team. Myself, Inspector Chononobu, um, Sergeant Uche, uh, and uh, Constable, Constable Clinton, four of us, went to Mbosi as advance party. We got there, we met with the military FOB there, and told them our attention. They said the their their territorial to artillery has informed them. So I asked them to drop me off to go and survey the area again. I alone went into the target area, took pictures again, confirmed virtually, you know, I had my visuals on him. I even exchanged uh, pleasantries with him. Saw him, saw his other brother at Tochuku Kweme. It was a twin duplex. They were preparing for burial. So I came in. There was no network whatsoever there. There was no way I could communicate back to command. So I sent C.S. Patrick a text telling him I had eyes on the target. The text did not go through. I had to trek from where I was back to the FOB. So on getting there, we managed to get network. I communicated them. Started coming down. On getting there, on the way they got back, sorry, they got to the FOB, we started planning again. I went back the second time, now with a different vehicle. I went back to confirm whether he was still around because while I was going out the first time, he was leaving. He was leaving with his uh, blue Honda Crosstor with a Lagos plate number. So he drove past me. So I came back to confirm he wasn't around anymore. So on my way leaving, I discovered he was driving in again. So I quickly went back and told CSP Patrick that he was back and the team was ready to move. It was a joint operation compromising of the military, the police, uh, and the uh, AVG, a number of AVG. So, cut long story short, we came in, did the operation, and got the guy, got him and his and his um, and his uh, elder brother. Before then, the target was him, but along the line, I discovered his brother too had ties to ESN. He he lives in Italy, while the target lived uh, in um, Turkey, Istanbul. So. We did the operation, arrested him, we pulled out. We moved straight to command headquarters, police command headquarters. If you remember Villa Day, I came in with uh, CSP Patrick, he came in to brief you, I was there. So after the whole briefing, you were happy with the development, sir. And you gave me 60,000 Naira for lunch. I don't even think you counted the money, but when I counted it, it was 60,000 Naira. Okay, well, there and then, he briefed you on weapons recovered and I think ammunitions too, and the guy suspect on his phones. 
and he asked us to commence investigation. Sir, there and there, CSB Patrick Abbasi failed to brief you on the vehicles he recovered, the money, the cash that was recovered in the guy's house, his um, gold ornaments and um, exotic wines that was scattered away from his house. None was reflected in that report. But it was not in my place to say anything to you, sir. So we left back to base. Getting back to base, he changed and started interviews and went about went about our interrogations. So at the end of the day, he called me to his office and said, I know this is a very delicate matter and he wants it to be handled professionally. I said, you can count on me as usual. He said, I should find out how much this guy has in his account and feed him back. I said, okay, sir. I got back to him and told him that this guy had about 44 million in his account. I said, okay, I should find a way and pull it out and give it to him cash. I said, sir. He said, yes, he has given me a directive. I said, okay, sir. Started making arrangements to get the money to him. So that was, that, that arrest was made on a Wednesday. I think on the 11th or so. It was on a Wednesday, I can remember vividly. On Friday, I already had the money to him cash. I already had hard currency given to him cash. About uh, $53,000. I gave it to him. He said, okay. Then he took the he, he took the mobile phones with him. He had been ha having the mobile phones with him. So everything kept on going normally. We continued the investigation. We went out for other arrests. We went to Zobolo to effect the arrest of one Patrick and, and, and a gun runner also. So everything kept moving normally till Thursday. On Thursday, Thursday, that was last week, Thursday, he called me and said I should meet him somewhere in Ukulu. It was almost past 11 p.m. I said, sir, is there an oppression? Is there something you want me to do? He said, no, I should just meet him there. My spirits did not go well with that meeting because I, I happen to know who I work for and I know the kind of person he is. So when he said I should meet him, I had my reservations. So I did not go. I made up flimsy excuses on why I could not go. The next day, I was in the office. He saw me, he said, uh, why didn't I come to meet him? I said, sir, it was late and all of that. He said, okay, that I should come and see him that evening, later at night. I said, okay, no problem. So later that Friday night, he started calling me again at a very awkward time, asking me to come and meet him. This time around, he wasn't in Okul anymore was around Upo. I told him I couldn't come. He now started shouting over the phone. I knew something was wrong. And at that junction, I had to go underground. Sir, you, you have been here with us for uh, about two years now. I think this coming October, make it two years you've been here with us. And um, you know how we function in that act with I already knew C.S. Patrick Abosve was looking for ways to cover his tracks. At that junction, I was so innocent, I did not know things have started going wrong for him. And he needed a scapegoat because I am the only link to all of this. So if, if he could take care of me, there would be nobody to talk, you know. So, sir, I had to go underground, knowing the, the capacity he has. I had to go underground. So I have remained underground even up to this moment because I know the very moment I show up, sir, it will be my SUD on your table. And I'm not mixing words, sir. The very moment I show up, my SUD will be on your table. Sir, I, I, as much as I want to come out and tell the world, but I still don't want to die. I'm the only child of my parents and I don't want to die. 
but i'm making this video because i'm making this audio rather because since yesterday he has been going around making arrests of innocent persons that he knows have no link to him you know in his insatiable quest to quench this matter and hang it on someone's neck he's making arrest of innocent people and detaining them while all along he knows the money was given to him sir i i pray to your good office to please and please look into this matter diligently there is nothing that can happen in okozo rrs that the oc is not aware of there is nothing there is no way I don't have the capacity to pull that kind of stunt without his approval. So please, sir, I would love you to look into this matter very well and look at it as a father. The only reason I am underground is because I know my life is at risk. I know the dangers associated with being on his path. He's like a failed, he's like a tipper that just failed brakes. He's, 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 there's no brakes. He's on rampage and he will clear everything on his path. I've seen it happen and it will continue happening. The only thing that will happen is an SUD. There will be no investigation. Either he does it in the field or he will do it while torturing me. They will just tell you that I am dead uh, and if the, the, the information died with me. But so I'm telling you that that money is with C.S. Patrick Abozwe. So he should stop this charade of an investigation when he knows the truth. He should find a way to fix his mess without dragging innocent people into it. Without dragging innocent people into it. I was thinking this was going to end with me. I was willing, out of respect and loyalty, I was actually willing to take the fall and just ignore and have, and have it all on my head. But I can't ignore...